right, let's see if you're here. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, this meeting is being recorded. If anyone else is recording this meeting, please let us know. Seeing none, um, I'd like to rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Madam um, Chair. So, welcome everybody. We're very excited. Um, Mrs. Harrington said that was the best Pledge of Allegiance we've had all year, and it's true. And this is truly one of our most favorite meetings that we have. So, without further ado, we're actually going to hear presentations. We as a district believe so much in giving back to the community that is so wonderful and supportive to us. So, we're going to start with Bryn Lawn. Um, this is Dr. Chamberlain and her team, and Mrs. Trini want to come up. They'll share with us about some of the community service projects they've been doing um, this school year. Thank you, everyone. This year, it seemed at the Bryn Mawr School, we just had a lot of emphasis on supporting our troops. I think that had a lot to do with, we have a lot of folks in our building and in our families who are associated with the military and were really giving of themselves. So that's what you're going to hear tonight. I'm going to let Ms. Trini introduce our, our guests this evening, and I hope you enjoy the work that they did this year. I'd like to introduce to you that our students are from Bryn Mawr second grade is Sam Shea, Mary Senior, and Cooper Beninati. And then in our first grade and kindergarten is Jenea Jordan. And then from the Auburn High School preschool, Atlas and Axis. Oh, Jaden, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight about our service learning project. In the fall, we started to work on how to write a friendly letter. While we were practicing how to write, Mrs. Sweeney talked to us about a soldier, Special Ops Andrew, Mark Venus, who was deploying overseas. He had attended Glenmore School and graduated from Auburn High School. We ended up writing letters to him in January. Not only did we write letters, we drew pictures of different places around Auburn. We thought in case he was homesick, he could look at the pictures and remember times he went to those places. We also had to tell him Toys R Us was no longer there. We hope that didn't make him sad. <laughs> Mrs. Trini told us that it would take about 40 days for our letters to get there. We also put a few decks of cards, sunscreen, and car candy in the box so we would protect his friends that have something to eat and something to do. We were very excited and proud too be able to write to a soldier. Mrs. Johnson's kindergarten class with people from the school and the community also wanted to help other members of the Bryn Mawr family. Her class organized the collection of things like toothpaste, soap, chapstick, and magazines for family members of the students and staff who are serving in the military. Ms. Johnson even got someone to pay for all of the postage to send these items. The 
members of the Brimma family who will will receive the super support of private first class Hayden Miss Wilson Army Religious Affairs Sub Specialist Fort Still, Oklahoma. <laughs> Petty Officer 3rd Class Anthony Kosio, Navy, Cryptologic Technician, Yokosuka, Japan. Corporal John Landry, Marine Corps, Crew Chief on V-22, Presidential Squadron, HMX-1, Quantico, Virginia. Specialist Pat Patrick Spooner, Army National Guard, trans Transportation, Worcester, Massachusetts. Our dad, Sergeant Nathan Lewis, USA Army, Camp hum Humphreys, South Korea. We are proud to <coughs> support our troops. Thank you. And next, we'll welcome Mrs. Stanick and her team from Packachog. Good evening, everyone. This year, Packachog did some of our typical events where we did our fall fun fall food drive, as well as some of our other events. Our Pennies for Patients was new this year, but we've done some cancer um, fundraising in the past. So I'm going to let each of the grade levels share their community service learning projects with you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Doreen Guitar, and I'm a second grade teacher at Packachog School. Hi. I have with me tonight four second graders who are going to share details of our community service learning project. They are Asher Smith from my classroom, Adriel Sakwa from Mrs. Dunn's class, Riley Doherty from Mrs. Lemire's class, and Charlotte Grensevich from Mrs. D. Hall's class. Back, back in. Back in November, we decided to participate in a project called Milk Makes a Difference. This project was going to benefit children who live in Tanzania, which is in Africa. We also sold cookies and milk at our literacy night back on Tuesday, November 27th. This helped us to raise additional money for our project. It was neat being on the other side of the lunch counter serving our families. Altogether, we raised over $1,200. Beginning on November 15th, we started a milk jug challenge. The students in all the classrooms at Packachalk School donated loose change until December 14th. The students counted the change. The winning class from each grade level won an extra recess. Because of, because of this project, we the students developed empathy and compassion for others. We learned about hunger and poverty, and we 
became empire to help build a better world. Thank you to all of our PAC families for supporting us, which in turn supported all of those kids in Tanzania. Thank you. Thank. Good evening. My name is Christine Jumay. I'm a first grade teacher at Packetchog Elementary School. Um, I have four first graders here today with me who are briefly going to tell you about our community learning project that we participated in in the fall. I have Molly Warren from my class. I have Irene Sullivan from Ms. Williams' class, Molly Mitchell from Mrs. Cherie's class, and Jamison Keller from Mrs. Clancy's class. In November, I look great. In November, as agreed, we asked families for donations to help the town of Auburn Animal Control. Animals can be adopted through this department, but oftentimes they need the basic necessities to keep these animals comfortable and healthy and ready for adoption. Many kinds of animals are adopted through this program like cats and dogs, so we began collecting items like canned dog food, wet and dry cat food, and cat litter. There is a lot of cleaning involved with managing the shelter, so families will also be able to donate items like laundry detergent, bleach, paper towels, and dish soap. Toys and bedding are also very important too. Lonely animals, so, so lonely animals. So families were able to donate lots of squeaky toys and balls, linens such as towels that are used for bedding in a gently used dog bed. <laughs> During our, during our lunch, we surprised Miss Amy Ian Contois, the animal control officer, with all of our donations that we collected. Because there were so many donations on our school stage, stage we needed Mr. Dew Hamill to help transport them. We hope the animal shelter continues to get donations to help our furry friends feel safe, loved, and prepared for adoption. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Elaine. I'm a, a kindergarten teacher at Packachog Elementary School. This is Jillian Hakins and Tessa Fritz who are also kindergarten teachers there. And we have Kaya Resnick and Callie Wood presenting our project. Go ahead. Hi everyone, my name is Kaya and this is Callie. We are kindergarten students at Packachog. This year, kindergarten decided to raise money for the Be Like Brett Foundation. The money we raise will be used to purchase finishing touches for the house of love, such as paint. Hold on, let's start over here. Ready? Go ahead. The money we raise will, we, will go to a project called the house of love. The house is being built so that teenagers live at the be like but they have their own space and also so there is more room for volunteers who visit Haiti. Our money will be used to, to purchase finishing touches for Brick's House of Love, such as paint, decorations, and furniture. Each class painted heart prints and decorated heart shaped magnets. We sold these items at our 100th day celebration to family members and friends of the kindergarten students. We had fun creating these items and were able to raise $718 to donate to Brick's House of Love. Thank you for all of your support in Kindergarten Community Service Project. And next we'll welcome Swanson Row team.
Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for this evening. We always love sharing the great things that are going on in the schools. Um, just a few notes or points to note. The community service learning projects, we've done several at Swanson Road, so we're going to share some of those with you tonight. Um, we are not going to share, though, all of the other service projects that we do that support our community, both within Auburn and beyond. But it's because of the generosity of the Auburn community that we're able to support all of these people and all of these organizations. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Christina Cody, our grade four teacher, who's going to be our representative tonight, along with Lucy Zaleski, grade four student, Alana Bono, our grade three student, and also Elaine Anagua, our grade five student. Kids have a lot to share. Molly's first. Students were able to participate in two ways by setting up an online page and, begin, and, begin, and bringing collections boxes to school. Leukemia and Lymphomia Society provided some activities as part of the Pennies for Patients program. These activities complemented the fourth grade science unit on the human body. Through these various activities, fourth graders learned about the circulatory system, what cancer and leukemia, leukemia are, and their effect on the human body. Students learned science concepts while also participating in something that makes an impact in helping others. This year, in addition to what you already heard, the students at Swanson also participated in school-wide work surrounding Pride and Purpose. One of our annual service learning about projects support, supporting our sister school in South Africa we worked really hard in PE class, and together we raised over $4,000 for school supplies and materials. Students also participated in Bake for Good. We learned how science and math re and reading is used in baking. Students, were taught how to bake roll, bread, rolls, pretzels, and cinnamon rolls. They were given enough ingredients to bake two loaves of bread, one to enjoy as a family and one to be donated to the Friendly House in Worcester. Hundreds of loaves were baked and donated by Swiss families. This year, fifth grade students at Swanson, as a, part of, as a part of guidance classes and their work with care community members, such as the DA's office, AYFS, the Auburn Police Department, and Auburn High School, decided that rather than having a community celebration, we would play it forward through community service learning projects. They decided to research places within our community where they could donate either time or items to support those in need. Each of the eight fifth grade classes identified a service project to work on during the spring. Some of these projects included Valentine's for Boston Children's Hospital patients, Operation Suitcase, where donations were collected to be donated to homeless shelters for parents and children in need, thank you notes to active military members, a cafeteria transformation, adopt a pet, flag football fundraisers, and finally care packages created for children undergoing chemotherapy. All of these projects were near and dear to our hearts and brought service learning to help people in need in and around Auburn. Finally, our green and festivities include community service learning that resulted in removing plastic water bottles and straws from our school cafeteria. Less plastic. The Auburn team, or the Arboretum team has been creating a walking path through Oak Grove for an entire Arboretum community to enjoy. This year's service project was made possible through the generous donations from the Pappas Foundation. Our green-minded students continue to work on making these beautiful green spaces in and around Swanson for everyone to enjoy.
And next we'll invite Mr. Desto and his team to the podium. Should we all feel guilty with our plastic water bottles? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, maybe hide them under the table. I really appreciate all the accommodations the district's making for me here, allowing me to. Uh, I'm actually going to use this thing. You know what the heck? Um, so uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Greg Desto, the principal of Auburn Middle School, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to some really special kids. Um, there's almost never, I bet there's not, if we did the math, 10 days in a school year where there's not some kind of community service project going on at the middle school. Uh, a great deal of that is driven by our student council, a really outstanding group of kids. And I must mention um, that Tammy Bailey is, is the leader of the, she's the faculty advisor for the student council and does a really wonderful job. I am going to now simply introduce the vice president of the student council and then get out of the way. And his name is Iron Mike Fortunato. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Burnell, Dr. Lose, school committee, administrators, parents, and fellow students. My name is Michael. I have been on the student council for three years, and this year I was elected VP. For some of the council, it was a new environment to work with the residents at ALC, but the people there were nothing but welcoming and encouraging. Miss Tracy is the best. She's never hesitated to make us feel part of the team and guide us so we felt part of the ALC community. Good evening, my name is Ella. I am the president of the Auburn Middle School Student Council. Beyond the activities we do for school, we're asked to complete community service hours. Since moving to West Street, we have formed a relationship with Auburn Life Care. As members, we are asked to volunteer once a month and help Miss Tracy, the activity director, with afternoon activities. She loves that we are getting involved and hopes some of us continue when we head to high school. Some members are here to share their experiences at Auburn Life Care. Hi, my name is Michaela. I'm a, I am in sixth grade and this is my first experience with student council. When I go to Auburn Life Care, I experience kindness, which I really admire because mostly everyone there lives together and they treat each other like family, even though some were strangers when they first got there. My most interesting interaction has been playing bingo there because we were paired up with other people and we would be able to have conversations and get to know each other as we play. Once when I was there, I was paired up with a person who had kids in the army. We talked a lot about how much it meant to her to see younger people volunteer there. What I have liked most about visiting is helping. Once when I w went there for the Halloween party, I was able to help take down the decorations and even got to bring patients to their rooms. My trips to ALC were amazing. I look forward to going back there again next year. Hi, my name is Natalie. I'm in sixth grade, and this is my first year on student council. When I go over to Auburn Life Care, I enjoy meeting new people and visiting people who need my help. I also feel more involved in my community. My most interesting interaction has been helping a blind resident play bingo. I helped her win multiple games. It was fun to win, <laughs> but we also had a great time getting to know each other. What I liked most about visiting is that after each session, I feel like I feel good about what I did. The patients' reactions can be heartwarming. They are usually very thankful that we stopped by. I'm grateful Student Council gave me the opportunity to volunteer in our community. It feels good to make a difference in someone's life. Hi, my name is Annika, and this is my first year in Student Council. Going to Auburn Life Care is a great opportunity to get to know all the nice, welcoming people in my community. One of my most interesting interactions is how have had at Auburn Life Care was the first time I went there in October. We played multiple rounds of bingo. I helped a kind woman who had trouble seeing her board. Once I went there, I had no doubt that I wanted to go back again. The people at Auburn Life Care were welcoming and nice, and everyone made you feel like you belonged. The people love when we come to help, and we love to help too. Auburn Life Care is one of my favorite places to go after school. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Haley. This is my first year in Student Council. Student Council has opened up many opportunities. One is coming closer with my community. I got to go to the Auburn Life Care many, multiple times. When I go to the Auburn Life Care, I can help many great people. My most interesting in interaction has been painting their nails. It was a struggle. They can't move their hands for great, but I still made it look good. <laughs> During the St. Patrick's Day season, two Auburn students Irish step danced. We brought residents down to the center area to watch their performance. They really did enjoy it. They also danced in their seats. Annika, Natalie, and I showed them pictures of, all, of one of the dancers in their costumes. We answered questions about the dancers' trip to Ireland, and we also had an amazing time there, and we hope we can do it again. What I liked most was watching people smile when volunteers like myself walked through the doors. The patients can have mixed emotions, but most of the time they are excited to have AMS students arrive. <coughs> I really enjoyed volunteering, and I hope I can make more memories with the people there. Hi, my name is Leah, and this is my second year in Student Council. When I visit Auburn Life Care, I get to experience the fun of helping others. All of the people there are kind, sweet, and funny. My most interesting interaction has been going over and making a craft with them. The woman I was with told me many stories, and I will never forget her. What I liked most about visiting was the feeling that I was doing something good for other people. The patient's reactions can vary. Some of them are happy to have an activity to work on, while others seem excited to have the opportunity to chat with someone new. There is a variety of interesting people to me, and it is, and it is a really great experience. Honestly, just being there makes me feel happy. I get the sense that I am doing good for my community. I really hope that in the future, I will be able to continue to bring joy to residents there. Hi. My name is Morgan. I have been on student council for two years. When I go over to Auburn Life Care, I get to experience the pleasure of spending time with and helping new people. My favorite activity at Auburn Life Care was playing bingo with the residents. It is a heartwarming experience to see the way people yell bingo when they know they have won. <laughs> what I have liked most about visiting is the environment. When you walk in, you feel welcome. It brings me joy when I get to talk to someone new, because every resident has a different story to tell. Going to ALC never fails to put a smile on my face. I truly look forward to having the opportunity to volunteer there again, <laughs> once again next year. Thank you for listening to our stories. We hope you enjoyed them as much as we enjoy volunteering at Auburn Life Care. Can take a picture. Um, boys and girls, before anyone leaves, if anyone who presented, if you want to come up front, maybe we can take a group picture of everybody. For those that are still here and staff, if you want to join in, you're more than welcome. Come on, one more big smile. You can breathe while you smile, too. Are we all set? Yes. All right, thanks a lot. Awesome job, guys. If you'd like to stick around, we're just going to take a brief recess so we can look at some of your work and meet some of you. All right, I'd like to call the meeting back to order again, and we will move right on to special recognitions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is just a great night for us tonight, those wonderful community service projects, and we're going to continue with the good information. So if I can invite Madison Poshkas up to the podium. She's here, if you'll remember, uh, back on April 5th. Um, Madison won the privilege of serving as student governor, and I did share a clip of that at town meeting. She did an outstanding job, so we'll turn it over to you to hear how, how it went. Well, thanks for having me, Dr. Brunel. Like she said, my name is Madison Poshkas. I graduate from Auburn High on Friday, which is crazy, <laughs> and I'll be going to Simmons University in the fall to study political science and public policy, which is really exciting. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit about something that's near and dear to my heart, which is civic education, particularly how it um, relates to the town of Auburn. 
into the state of Massachusetts. So in Auburn, we're super lucky to have some awesome civic education programs for our high school students especially, namely our Model UN program and what's most near and dear to my heart, We the People, which is our district's gener generously funded congressional simulation club. My friend Ryan here is also a member. <laughs> so the seniors who participate in the AP Gov offering here at Auburn High School have the opportunity to attend a state competition in which we present congressional simulated speeches. So this is taken very seriously <laughs> by the members of APGov and we spend a couple months in the middle of the winter um, preparing. So I was lucky enough to serve as a unit captain and helped my group to prepare our speeches which were um, in pertinence to changes to the Constitution. So things like the amendment process and political parties. So. As my work as a unit captain, I guess, alluded to my teachers, Mr. Kennard and Mr. Bonaccio, they were impressed with the work that I did and they recommended that I were, um, would be sent to this event that Beacon Hill hosts called Student Government Day. So every school, every high school in the Commonwealth is entitled to send two, two kids, two, two students, to Student Government Day, which is a mock legislative um, procedure where two bills are debated on the House floor. So instead of having our representatives on the floor that day, it's all high school students. So it's super fascinating and super interesting. So I was preparing to go to this and I was super excited. And then Mr. Bonaccio said to me, hey Madison, I'd like you to write this essay that would qualify you if you won to be the governor at this event. I was like, okay, Mr. Bonaccio, I'll write an essay. <laughs> and I did, and it had to be about a bill that was actually just passed. It wasn't passed at the time that I was writing about it, but actually just passed, which is really exciting, that allows Massachusetts schools to implement civics-based learning projects as early as the eighth grade, which is really, really exciting. So the way that I define civic education is teaching and giving our students, affording our students the opportunity in nonpartisan opportunities that shape their partisan opinions tomorrow. So we teach our students things like how do elections work and how can I register to vote when I'm able to and just basics about our political system that will help them to become informed members of the electorate tomorrow. So civic education is highly contested in Massachusetts and other parts of the country because they claim that we're shoving politics down kids' throats and that we're <laughs> giving them um, young, impressionable minds ideas that might be too big for them to understand. But again, I would argue that civic education is nonpartisan experiences and bits of knowledge that help to inform the next generation of the electorate. So, long story short, I won the contest. <laughs> um, out of, I think, 50 to 75 entries from around the Commonwealth, I was chosen to serve as student governor, which meant that instead of preparing legislative talks and debate, I got to sit on a huge rostrum that JFK once spoke at and give my speech in front of the Joint Committee of the House and Senate. So it was really exciting and again, I got to give my speech and I, um, our state senator, Mike Moore, I got to speak with him and I had aides all day. I had like um, <laughs> legislative aides that were there to assist me all day. Didn't need much assistance, but they were there if I needed them. <laughs> and it was just really, really exciting. Um, so in terms of civic education and where we can go from here, in terms of civic education, especially in Auburn, I hear through the grapevine that we might be working on implementing a civics course in the eighth grade here at Auburn, which is really exciting and makes me very happy because what I wrote about in my essay that won the contest is that Massachusetts is falling behind. I had to stir the pot a little bit in my essay. <laughs> um, Massachusetts, we pride ourselves in being such a educational beacon and we, um, tend to rank really highly in terms of the 50 states when it comes to education, but our civic education is actually in the, the bottom half of our country. So in Massachusetts, we don't require a civics course in order to graduate. We have one at Auburn High, it's called AP Gov, but you don't have to take it. There's 40 of us, not even, that take it in terms of our entire almost 200 person class. So I do hear things that are sort of uninformed from my classmates on an everyday basis and it's disheartening because we are the next generation and we really should be working on our civic education, especially in Massachusetts, where we pride ourselves in being the center of the spirit of American politics, we're where everything began, so we should really work on getting our stuff up to par. So that was what my speech was about and this new legislation that has been passed since is going to be super, super pivotal in getting our civic education standards up in Massachusetts. So in terms of my experience and how Student Government Day and this opportunity has affected me, not only did I get to do a super cool thing, but I've also already been offered an internship in the fall with Senator Mike Moore. 
So <laughs> that's just how one sort of extra civic engagement opportunity affects one person. So I guess what I would leave you with is in Auburn, in Massachusetts, in our country, imagine what a more heightened approach to civic engagement could do for the whole youth, for the whole next generation, if it's already given me a super cool opportunity and I haven't even graduated yet. <laughs> so thank you guys for having me here today. I really appreciate it. Being great. <laughs> I was going to ask if anyone had any questions or comments, but I think yeah. she pretty much. I don't think we have any questions because you've covered just about everything. But, but um, comments, I'm sure we have a few comments. Um, if you could just come back up for a moment, Madison, that'd be great. I usually start off with um, my fellow committee members, but I'm going to start this one off before they steal all of the thunder. <laughs> I'm just blown away um, by the, the, the way you conduct yourself. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing. And Thank I, you very much. I think I've known you for um, five years, probably never had an opportunity to actually have a conversation or listen to you talk. It's a good thing that you're graduating this year because you're going to run out of people to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> are on your level. It's just, it's amazing. We couldn't be um, more proud of you. And again, so impressive. I've seen adults that, that can't present the way that you do without any notes and just kind of going up there. And, and um, I'm sure you did just as well at the State House that day. Mm. Thank you and very much. Probably why um, Senator Moore asked you to join his team. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I couldn't be more impressed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for representing us the way you do. I'm going next before they get a chance to steal my thunder. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Harrington. Hi. Um, Does everyone know her? <laughs> yeah. So I've watched you like grow up and. I babysit um, her kids. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't think of a better babysitter either because maybe you should teach them some of this. <laughs> um, no, and when you walked in here, when this first started, you said, I don't even know what I'm going to say. And all of that was just off the cuff, and that is just amazing that you are. You're brilliant and you're gonna go places and it's very exciting to see. And I can't wait to see what you've accomplished. And we're probably gonna drag you back in here down the road mm -hmm. someday. I'll be back. <laughs> so good job. Thank you very much. I'm just gonna say thank you for your presentation and I'm very impressed. Thank you. And I don't know you. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> but I will someday. <laughs> So I, I just can't get over your composure when you speak. Mm. You seem like it's something that's very near and dear to your heart. And we were actually given a transcript of your essay, and I felt like when I was reading it, I was reading something out of you know a, a grad school student's mm. portfolio or something. And I, I think you're going to do fantastic at Simmons, you know. And I do hope you come back and let us know how things are going because you you know we're just very proud to have you here and you know the, the Poshkas family. <laughs> Love you guys. So um, thanks and good luck and. Good luck on Friday night. Thank you so much. Uh, Simmons is lucky to get you. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited um, to be there. <laughs> yes, um, uh, amazing. I can't believe you didn't read that. You just spoke, so that's awesome. Um, it kept our attention, and it was a very interesting topic, and very um, obviously something you're passionate about, and I think you're going to go places, so good job. Thank you. And if you much. ever want to still babysit, I've got younger ones. <laughs> perfect, perfect. I'm not stealing my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, get, I have one more. It's actually a question for our chair or for Dr. Vanilla. Has this convinced us to add civics to the eighth grade curriculum and high school curriculum as well? Yeah, I think it definitely at eighth grade, and they already do a lot of civics at high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Congratulations. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Great job. Mom, you must be very proud. Yes, we are. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a nice night. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Good stuff. So another um, piece of exciting information for the second year in a row, actually, Worcester Regional Airport and Massport, they're going to be honoring all the Worcester valedictorians and those from the neighboring communities, Auburn being one. So Jared Sargent is the um, valedictorian for Auburn High School. Delta Airlines is actually opening uh, up at the airport in August, and each valedictorian is going to get free round-trip air travel to congratulate and celebrate their success. So there's a program tomorrow up at the 
airport, but wanted to give um, congratulations and huge kudos to Jared. He'll be attending along with Mr. Brutus, his counselor, and I hope to be there um, as well. But just a, a great celebration um, for him. And now it's my distinct honor to introduce to you officially, I know I have shared it with you previously, uh, the two newest members of our leadership team. They've actually been members of our team, but they're gonna be serving in different capacities. So if you wanna come up to the podium, we'll have Dr. Elizabeth Chamberlain, who will be serving as assistant superintendent um, once Dr. Lose retires after 40 years, and Mrs. McCann, who will be serving as the Bryn Mawr principal that Dr. Chamberlain has vacated. So I just wanted to take this opportunity. We're very excited to have them in their new capacities um, joining us, and just wanted to give them a hearty congratulations and welcome. So great to have. Such great leadership. Um, Dr. Chamberlain, it doesn't seem like you want to stay up there very long. <laughs> That's a very hard act to follow, <laughs> you say. Sure is. Um, any comments? Um, I just have to say, Mrs. Mahan, um, I told my neighbor, who's in fourth grade, um, that you're going to Bryn Mawr, and he started yelling at me. <laughs> he, he's like, what? You're taking her? So you obviously had a presence there, so just so you know. <laughs> Thank you for all you do. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. I think it's a great fit. And we're all thrilled to have you guys in the new position. So please reach out to us if you need anything. That's what we're here for. So. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And do we have any citizens' comments this evening? Seeing none, we will now move on to the student representative's report. Ryan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, between the last meeting, which I was unable to attend, and today, uh, it's been a very busy two weeks for myself, the rest of the senior class, as well as the entire high school. So the day after the school committee meeting was the uh, concert for the high school band and high school chorus. At that, the seniors got recognized, and it was an all-around great night where lots of music was made. Following that, we had Memorial Day weekend, which was one of the uh, no homework weekends for the year. I know that the freshman, sophomore, and junior classes all appreciate those a lot. <laughs> With classes being done, I couldn't appreciate it as much since I had homework. <laughs> uh, then that Tuesday into Wednesday, the senior class held their walk in here at high school. Uh, it, was, it was a long night, but it was a very joyous night where we saw the video yearbook. Uh, we were fed all night long, and everybody was able to celebrate with their friends. Uh, this last Monday, the senior class went on the dinner cruise at Boston Harbor. Again, thanks to our wonderful advisors, Mr. Berg and Mr. Tatum, for planning and helping uh, pull all, all of this off. We Enjoyed the night out in the harbor. Uh, my bus got back late, 30 minutes. But it was an overall good night. Uh, also, Monday was underclassmen awards, where the freshman, sophomore, and junior classes were recognized for their achievements throughout the year in their subjects, as well as attendance. Uh, I don't know who got the awards. I'm assuming Allie got one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Tuesday was the junior class uh, spree day. I believe they held that at Rocket Land like the senior class did last year. Uh, overall, a great day. I've seen a lot of pictures from Mr. Carrick's Twitter showing a lot of fun. Uh, senior class, we've also been holding graduation rehearsals every day so far, Tuesday, Wednesday, tomorrow, and Friday, uh, leading up to ultimately graduation. Graduation, like Maddie had mentioned, being Friday night. And next week is finals, Monday, Tuesday, for the end of class. Excellent. Great report. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Ryan before I start in on it? <laughs> um, what school did you end up choosing? Uh, I'm going to Suffolk and Oh, great. Yes. That's great. Good job. Thanks. Now, did you excuse Ellie from this meeting? or? I don't have any say. The FBI is excusing her. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's another concern of mine. <laughs> I was going to suggest that maybe you start taking karate so that you can kind of combat some of her antics. But now if she's going to be in with the FBI, that's not going to do you any good. 
<laughs> Luckily, you're almost you're almost done. So. <laughs> but no, it's been great having you, Ryan. You're, yeah. You've been an awesome representative. Thank you. Much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Thank you for coming. I know classes are over for you. And if I remember when I was a senior, I was like, <laughs> no. So thank you so much for coming. I forgot that's why I wondered it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was the time You're not the only one, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hopefully we see, see you around town anyway. And you anyway. coordinate your too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you guys are yeah. matching. Yeah. We were hanging out before the meeting. <laughs> well, that way if they're in dark colors, they can sneak in easier. <laughs> you want to take off, or are you going to stick around for the event? I'm going to stick around. Okay, wow. You, yeah. hey, we really do appreciate all that you've done. And That's aside dedication. From George's abuse. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I would have now. Have a good summer and good luck in college, too. Yeah, come back. I would now seek approval of the minutes of May 22nd. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of May 22nd. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. We now move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So first item up is the out-of-state um, field trips. As noted in the memo, the first one is a ski trip from the high school to Jay Peak uh, in Vermont. There is a trip from the Special Olympics Unified trip to uh, Brooklyn, New York that um, Ms. DeLuca and a couple students will be making in September. A trip to Quebec, Canada that Ms. Fredella takes the students um, every other year. We have our Washington, D.C. trip. This is the 10th year, actually, this year. The eighth graders have gone on that um, trip. So it is my recommendation that you approve all of those. You can certainly um, take them as a group or do them individually. That's your choice. If there are no um, questions or concerns um, regarding the trips, we could take them as a group. I make a motion to approve the field trips as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions? Have fun. Come back. Tell us how they work. <laughs> <laughs> no bus accidents. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Vote. Great. Thank you. Um, the next item is the handbook changes. So annually we bring those forward to you from um, the principal's review through, thank you, good night, um, through the handbook. Much of the changes, Bye. Really nice. uh, much of the changes are regard to pagination and updating um, years and such like that, but it is my recommendation that you approve these as noted. I would entertain that motion. I make a motion to approve the updates to each school's handbook for the 2019-2020 school year. Second. Any questions? Concerns? I just had a quick question about the nut thing. Yes. Um, I just I did read this is a few years ago that um, is this just snacks or is it the whole school? This is actually the whole school. Okay. So we have a student uh, who was currently in our preschool. Uh, Dr. Lose did a lot of work with the team and Dr. Chamberlain. Um, the allergy that this child has is so extreme that to even have somebody who has had peanut just airborne really could cause um, serious illness for her. Okay. So um, the decision was made at the preschool, the whole section of the building was a peanut free zone. Yep. With her going to Bryn Mawr School, it's gonna be peanut free across the school. It's a small place. Yeah, just cause research, although it's a couple years ago, mm -hmm. there was a Massachusetts study, I don't know if you read that, that um, there were less EpiPens administered when you had a peanut table versus a peanut free school. So I just, mm. I didn't know. I, I mean, then again, I just, I learned about that when I was in school, so it could have okay. changed since okay. then. Okay. But um, just something I'll look into. Thank you, yeah. we certainly will do that. And, and I, I can see if I can, I mean, it was back when I had my UMass stuff, so mm -hmm. if I can find the study, Great. I can show it to you. Definitely do, um, yes. But, yeah. Okay, so thanks. Through, through the chair, I actually have a question for Dr. Bernal. If we have a child with such a serious allergy, I vaguely recall someone saying that they're having to check all of the backpacks and the lunch boxes coming into the preschool classrooms. Is that protocol? That that might have been a, a precaution that was at least proposed and then not implemented. I'm not sure. So I'm more concerned about the safety of this child moving into a new mm -hmm. larger school. Mm -hmm. Would that consideration still be made for all of the classrooms? Yes. Okay. That's part of the protocol that okay. we're putting in place going forward. Okay. Yeah. And that was what the study showed was that. Um, when it was that extreme, it was it became lax after a while mm. because you know if you have so yeah I don't know 
We'll certainly look at it. I, I will say um, the team did a tremendous job preparing um, the preschool classrooms for the child this year, and it, and it was a, a successful, <clears throat> very successful year because of that. And there were even separate cleaning products that were used there so that they didn't, you know, they didn't get contaminated from any other part of the school. So yeah. um, we'll certainly look at that research, but yeah. the protocol that they have in place, uh, I congratulate Dr. Lose, Dr. Chamberlain, the whole team mm -hmm. that included Mr. Fahey and things too, and, and staff members, uh, and the nurses, obviously. So, um, you know. Our goal is to keep her and all of the kids safe. safe. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. Dr. Lise and I were able to attend the Chamber of Commerce um, breakfast ceremony recently at which the students noted here, Olivia Kernan, Grace Levin Savage, Madison Poshkas, who was here earlier, Michael Robichaud, Emily Wambach, and Michael Delastrito were awarded very generous scholarships from the Chamber of Commerce. And in fact, they noted that day um, that this, with these here, it's $312,000 in total that the Chamber has donated to students via scholarship. So congratulations to all of them. It was a great program. I also want to, we brought uh, with us this evening letters to the retirees um, for each of you to sign that we can send off. They really have been very well received in years past by the retirees. It is a big decision for individuals to make, particularly when they have donated uh, or, or donated so much of their um, life's time to a school district. In total, those who will be retiring have actually given the seven people 209 years of service to the Auburn Public Schools uh, in total. So it is my recommendation that you once again this year sign those um, to congratulate Kathy Lose, Pat Pazella, who's a grade seven science teacher, Denise Collins, a PE teacher at the middle school, Chris Aristo, a grade three teacher at Swiss, Val Cotter, a grade one teacher at Bryn Mawr, and Betty Bohm, a PE teacher, grades K to two, shared between Bryn Mawr and Pat. So they will certainly all be very missed. I would entertain that motion. I'll make the motion uh, to sign the letters to retirees and have them distributed. I'll second. Any discussion? We also have to add Deb Non. Thank you, through the chair, we was just gonna add that. Thank you, yep. Mrs. Holloway. Deb Non as well. Thank you, Kim. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is a vote. The next item in your packet we have, as we share with you, we are very much in the midst of hiring season. Many of the positions have been filled, which is great, uh, whether due to retirement, a new position that had been approved in the budget, or transfers, or even a couple of resignations. So. The principals continue to work diligently to get these in place, and we've been bringing on some really great people. It's always hard to say goodbye to those leaving, um, but it is also an exciting time to welcome some new people onto the team as well. Next, we have a donation from Seaman Engineering that made to Auburn Middle School in the amount of $300. It actually went to the one of our technology programs, uh, Mr. Camerat's program, regarding the undertaking that they're doing in the garden at the middle school. So in your packet is a note of thanks, uh, and it is my recommendation that you accept the donation. I would entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to accept with gratitude the donation. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> the next item is regarding uh, Auburn Middle School coaching stipends. So a number of years ago, those were actually paid by ARC Junior. So parents raised money and paid the coaching stipends um, of the coaches at the middle school. About five or so years ago, we brought that into the budget, believing that it really is the obligation of the school district to pay. But there really has been minimal increases in them. I think this year they were slated for 1025 per sport. So I asked our athletic director to do a, an analysis of area school districts. And what you see in your packet is that analysis. They vary from what appears to be a low of $1,000 to a high of about $2,800 $2, is the most one. So what I did is I, I took a look to see 
what would be close to the median point. So it is my recommendation that we increase the stipend for Auburn Middle School coaches to $1,750 each for the 1920 school year, and that we can, I'd, I'd ask you leave it open so that we can work, Mrs. Wersbicki and I, whether that additional amount, the $725 per coach, and there are 10, would either come from athletic revolving or perhaps the school choice account, both being appropriate. So it is my recommendation for you to do that. I think that's a great idea. Um, I know that we have some great coaches, and if, if you tried to put a dollar amount on the hours that they put into coaching, mm -hmm. um, and I certainly would not want them to, to leave the district and go elsewhere, um, even though I'm sure that wouldn't be the first thing that they would want to do, but it is quite um, a discrepancy with, with pay, so mm -hmm. I'm totally in support of this. I would entertain a motion. Make a motion to set the stipend for Auburn Middle School coaches at $1,750 per coach for the 2019-2020 school year. Okay. A second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. Thank you very much. Included in your packet, I know we had shared at the last meeting some information about the Packetog School Grade 1. We have posted for a first grade teacher to add there, just as we had done a few years ago for Bryn Mawr School at, uh, when they had 105 students. So there will continue to be some variability and some changes that will likely take place, but um, I appreciate your support in doing that and allowing that to happen. Mm -hmm. I have a question to the chair. Um, I was looking at the the grades, the breakdowns of classes and the numbers. Mm -hmm. Some of the classes had 25, while in the same grade another class had like 21. Mm -hmm. How come we can't like... So through the chair, it, it really depends sometimes in the co-teaching classrooms, depending on the needs of the students that are in there and the amount of support they could be provided. So it, it really is dependent on that. For the most part, they try to keep them pretty even. But my guess is I saw that too, like the 21 has probably had some pretty substantial needs okay. of children in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And then finally, the ALICE training. Wanted to make you aware that our school resource officer, Brian Kennedy, along with Sergeant um, Ken Charlton, back just after the Memorial Day break, completed the training, the simulation training at Auburn High School with the students in the ALICE program. So they had done that with the middle school students earlier uh, in the year, so now all grades six through 12 have had that, and I really thank them for the good work that they continue to do, both of those um, officers, as well as our safety advisory team there. Their work is tremendous. It certainly is. Mm -hmm. We've got a great, um, great police force mm -hmm. and emergency services. Lucky to have that relationship. Mm -hmm. Agreed. We now move on to unfinished business. Do you want to oh. address that? The superintendent. Oh, I'm him. sorry. That's okay. That was number one on there. Take over again. Excuse me? You sure you don't need me to take over again? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> We're st I'm stumbling enough. Um, I'd like to I'd like to put off the superintendent evaluation if, if that's okay with everyone. I did um, draw, draw up a little something that I wanted to share um, regarding the scoring and just talk about some of the criteria, which I don't think we've done enough of in the past for those um, watching at home. Um, so I just, had, I just had some more things that I wanted to share. And it said school on my computer there. So if we could just put this off until the next time we get together. We're going to meet in two weeks, yes? Through the chair, we do have a meeting scheduled for June 19th. So whether we keep it then or if you want to move it even sooner, that, that's a decision for the committee to make, yes. But we're not talking put it off till like September or something. No, no, no. No. Because we also have to have an executive session at some point. So okay. Following that. So I don't know if that works things. No, but we'll, we'll figure out a, a date that works for all of us. It could be sooner rather than later, but as soon as I get that piece of paper in my hands. <laughs> Not that it's oh. not the one for me, right? No, no, no. You have no, I have something similar with lots of little notes and, and okay. uh, criteria that I wanted to share. He's so. not done plagiarizing your notes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, someone's on a roll. <laughs> Maybe we need medicine. <laughs> medicine to help us. Moving right along. I don't need a motion to no. push that off. No. 
So under new business, just wanted to share with you one of our um, nurses at our primary school at Bryn Mawr School. She happens to be our lead nurse. She does an outstanding job, has requested a job sharing. She has some personal um, issues that really working full time uh, will not work. Fortunately, uh, Mrs. Sherry Urena, who has been serving as a long-term sub up at Packenchog School, has agreed to job share with her. This is all written out in the contract. Um, they've followed all the protocols. So Mrs. Gothy will be work working three days a week and Mrs. Urena two days a week, but they've also agreed to be um, very flexible if their time needs it. So I wanted to make you aware, but it's a, a great situation, both high quality individuals. So good news. Excellent. Great. And then the upcoming events, all of these end of school uh, events, the spree days have all um, been ongoing. Actually, I think today Pack was Packachog. Swanson's, I think, may have been postponed to Friday, I think is what I maybe heard with some potential weather. So, um, but great activities taking place. We have graduation for high school um, Friday evening. The middle school um, promotion ceremony will take place on Tuesday. And then students last day is the 12th, which is a half day. And we are all feeling tremendously stressed. It just seems like it has just come so quickly. Um, so. I know the kids are probably very excited, but lots of good things still happening. We just did a learning walk actually just last week and lots of good things happening in the district still. So pleased to share that. Great. We now move on to teaching and learning, Dr. Lose. So as many of you probably know, on May 9th, a few weeks ago, we held our annual Festival of the Arts, STEM and Wellness event. That event really showcases the artwork, the dancing, the music, and the technology that our students are engaged in from grades K to 12. And what I like about it is that you can really see that progression of skills K to 12, so I find it a very impressive event. What we noticed this year, though, was that it was our probably our largest turnout mm -hmm. ever in terms of attendance, and it was a bit crowded if any of you went. So we plan next year to use more areas of the building and kind of set up our galleries that kind of walk people through the building and lead them to different sections. So I think that will ease the crowding, but we all agree that we're just thrilled that it's such a huge hit and it always attracts so many people. And in terms of, or in your packet first, you'll find that there's a listing of colleges and universities where our students are being accepted. I think if you look through it, you'd see it's a pretty diverse and impressive list, and we can't say how proud we are of our last students, so congratulations to all of them, and way to go, Auden. Mm -hmm. In terms of our social studies committee, we've been meeting on a monthly basis to review the new standards that you've heard a little bit about. K to five just began that work, and they will continue it through the summer, and what they're trying to do is identify standards that they haven't been teaching and find a way to fit them into their curriculum in a way that it makes sense. So they're mapping out the lessons for next year and that will finish this summer. And then next year they will begin to look at resources and potential textbooks that they may want to recommend for adoption. The middle school started some of this work last summer and so this year they had the opportunity to really explore and examine and evaluate different textbooks out there. And they have gone with the McGraw-Hill series, it's a new one. They're actually not even going to be able to deliver it till June because they're updating it to make sure it has more of the Massachusetts standards in it, which will be good. But as Madison said, we will be implementing civics education at grade eight, and they've already started some of that work, so that's exciting too. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of the Social Emotional Learning Committee, that committee has been meeting monthly as well since about January, and we had some subcommittees. Some people are looking at a social emotional learning curriculum. Others look to find us a universal screener that we could administer fairly quickly to every student. And we did identify one of those. So we will be beginning to use that K to 12 this fall. And hopefully that will ha help us identify kids at risk earlier so that we can provide interventions sooner. We also purchased a progress monitoring piece that goes with that, and what that will help us to do is to evaluate the interventions that were put in place to see if they're being effective or not. So we think it's a nice component, and they'll continue to meet next year to finish out some of that work. And then finally, in term of, terms of summer curriculum, as you know, every year, we have many, many staff members this year. We have over 100, I believe, that will be doing some sort of curriculum work during the summer. We put out some areas that we'd like people to volunteer. Well, not volunteer, but some mm -hmm. people 
that we'd like them to work on it, but then we also allow them to write proposals of different curriculum activities they think that they would like to be engaged in. Some of them are very creative. So we've funded, like I said, probably over 100 educators to come in and do some of that work for various amounts of hours, and I give them great kudos that they're willing to give up part of their summer and they could go off to the beach really soon, <laughs> and they're coming in and do that work. So we're very fortunate. So, and that's that. Thank you for that report. Any comments, questions? Is that your last one? Last one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thanks. And we now move on to everyone's favorite time of the evening, business <laughs> and financial. OK. Good evening, everyone. In your packet, I provided a year-to-date budget report um, dated as of May 30th, 2019. Um, Dr. Burnell and I have been working closely with leadership and trying to um, streamline the budget and get everything um, closed out. And um, I will have some omnibus transfers coming to you um, probably the next meeting, but I don't have any tonight for you. So um, moving on to food services, Mrs. King, our food service director, um, is just once again participating with the Massachusetts School Buying Group. This is, um, she works with, it's 55 other school districts that are participating with her. Um, it's for the food and non-bid, food, no, food and non-food bids for 2019, 2000, 2022. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It was a typo and I'm... 2019-2020. Um, Mrs. King seeking the approval of the bid for the following. Um, milk and dairy products for New England ice cream, one-year bid. Paper and disposables, Central Paper Company, year two of the contract. Bread and bakery, Duva Distributors, uh, year two of the contract. The, um, the following bids are still pending, and she, she will make us aware and bring them. I'll uh, bring them to the meeting when um, when they're available. We're, we're still waiting on the grocery and frozen food, and the ice cream as well. So, if I could have a vote of support for, I would entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to approve the MSBG food and non-food bids as listed in the packet for the for 2019-2020. No second. Any discussion? Thank you for working on that. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is a vote. Thank you all. Thank you. And we now move on to policies. So Mr. Fahey and I uh, met recently. We just wanted to update the facility use. We, what we realized is um, attached in here, particularly on the second and third pages, is we did not account for um, rental of Auburn Middle School fields. They have the uh, football field there. So we did update those, and it is our recommendation that it stay the same rate as the high school. The football field at the middle school does not have um, lights, but we have been requested to rent it. So uh, for different occasions uh, when school is not in session. So it is our recommendation that you approve it as noted. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the rental rates for the AMS turf field as presented in policy KFA and KFAR community and school use of AMS and AHS fields and fees for use. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, I just have a question. I was looking through um, the rates. Mm -hmm. Why, how come the rates are so much cheaper all of a sudden, is there? Like the, the uh, auditorium with air conditioning? So actually, through the chair, um, we should have probably cleaned this up a bit. I didn't realize that. So the rates, we're not changing those. The only thing that we are updating is what's in red. So that's actually how the form read before. The $75 an hour for auditorium with air conditioning is $50. That's not a change that came here. That must have been at one of the previous um, one, so we'll clean that out. And it, it would have been an analysis done, it was years ago. Um, I would assume, I think it was a, a different business manager at the time who would have worked with Mr. Fahey and actually looked to see what did it actually cost us for that. So that was the reason the change. Okay. But, but those have been in place for a long time now. So it's still $400 an hour for no, it's $150 oh, sorry. an okay, hour. So, yes, sorry. so the ones that it's crossed out, we should just have taken those out. Oh, okay. So we'll, we'll update right. that and actually remove the ones that have lines drawn through them. All right. So it reads a little more cleanly. Okay. Any other questions or comments? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. And do we need an executive session this we, evening? We do not. We do not. Do we need an executive session this evening? Okay. I would take a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. I have a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. Good night, everyone. Thank you.